Lots of people going hiking, camping this time of year, right? But do you check for ticks when you get home? Health specialist Leah Sarich is here now with uh, what you need to know to stay safe from Lyme disease. Yeah, so people are really talking about this. A lot of celebrities coming forward saying they have this. But I like to focus on the science sure. and what we really know, <laughs> not what the celebrities are talking about. So first of all, we need to say that Lyme disease is, in fact, very rare. So if you look at the statistics from Alberta Health, basically you're looking at a chance of 1 in 10,000. 1 in 10,000? 1 in 10,000. Okay. See, people aren't hearing that. It's no. actually very, very rare. So if you look at last year's stats, we collected 1,376 ticks. Okay. Only nine of them actually had the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Oh, Only wow. nine out of all those thousands. Okay. So, so it is something you can prevent, though, which is why it's really useful to learn about it a bit more. So I spoke with Dr. Raj Bardwaj about this, and he tells me that Lyme disease is caused by a bacteria that lives in a very specific kind of tick. When you get bitten by the tick, this tick is infected with this, uh, this bug, and then when it is busy sucking your blood, the infection can go from the tick into your blood. It takes a while for that to happen, so if you go for a hike or go camping this weekend or something, uh, if you do a tick check and get the ticks off of you within a few hours, then the risk that you're going to catch anything from that tick is very, very, very low. Which is good, right? Yeah. So you want to get those ticks off. So first of all, where do you look for these ticks yeah. when you get home? So they like all those dark crevices, right? So you're going to look <laughs> okay. in your armpits, in okay. the groin area, behind yeah. the ears, at your hairline. That's where you'll likely find them. Dr. Raj tells me he's actually pulled one out of a belly button before. Ah. So that's super gross. Um, and to pull, it out, <laughs> to pull it out, you want to use some tweezers. So you've heard these myths about getting a flame or lighting yeah. a match or putting mayonnaise on it. Don't do any of those things. You want to use some tweezers and you want to get right next to it and you want to go at it from the side and then oh. you want to pull it straight out because you don't want to break it off you don't want that head to be left in there oh. so pull it straight out so this is all super gross right yeah. we don't I mean it's just <laughs> disgusting so what we want to do in fact is prevent this from happening in the first of place course. right so let's not even go there so for example using bug sprays so the bug sprays that work really well to prevent mosquito bites the ones with deed in them work really well to repel ticks so oh, that's, that's good. good so useful to wear that you want to dress a little fun so if you're going out hiking or camping, you want to tuck your pants into your socks so that okay. they can't get in and then crawl up your leg. Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. Also wear a hat, right, so that it prevents them from getting into your hair. So those are good things. However, if you actually do get bitten and the bacteria does get into your bloodstream, so that means it's been on you for a little while, it's really hard to get a diagnosis. So this is why we want to prevent this in the first place. Dr. Bardwatch explains why. In a perfect world, you would have a history of a tick bite. Really, it would be nice if you brought in the tick, right? Um, and then a history of that rash. But most people don't know that they've been bitten by a tick. I mean, ticks are stealthy. They bite you, you don't feel it, and then they, they suck your blood for a while, and then they leave. And they leave without you know, causing a whole lot of fuss. So that's hard. The rash that we used to think was maybe 80% is maybe only 30%. So that's hard. And then it can be a week or, or two weeks or even three or four weeks after your tick exposure that you finally get sick. So oh, that's wow. why it's tricky. So you get these flu-like symptoms, but these may not appear for two, three weeks, maybe even a you month or two. You forgot you went hiking. Exactly, yeah, or yeah. you don't connect the two, right? Sure. So that happens a lot. And these are symptoms of stage one disease. So that's if you've got that initial infection. But also that infection, that bacteria can travel through your body and go somewhere else. So this is stage two disease, so a little mm -hmm. bit later down the road. So if that that infection goes into your face, for example, you might get some tingling in your face, some nerve damage there. If it goes into your joints, like maybe in your knee, for example, you're going to get some swelling in oh, there. Oh, wow, okay. So these things all look like other things, like arthritis or MS, or sure. some things that are actually a lot more common than Lyme disease. So what's going to happen when you end up with stage 2 or stage 3 disease is they're going to have to rule out a bunch of other stuff first before they go back to the Lyme disease. But again, it's useful to be aware of that because if you've ruled out all those other more common diseases, then you can and say, well, hey, what about Lyme disease? You know, I do a lot of camping or I do a lot of hiking. Yeah. But of course, we want to remember that it's very rare, one in 10,000, and let's prevent this from happening in the first place. Good advice. Yeah. Breakfasttelevision.ca. That's where Leo's blog is. This is going to be up there uh, as soon as you can you get bet. it out as there. As soon as there I can get go. it up. We're going to check in with Mike Yanni right now, hanging out at the State Culinary Campus, getting.